Recently, I watched a video that blew up about how math changes your brain. It was interesting, but it was just presenting experimental data. Indeed, I myself have been in one of these math versus non-math brain studies during a math summer camp. It essentially concludes that math uses a different part of your brain, which is stronger if you're a mathematician. But what does it actually feel like to experience the strengthening of this math network in your brain over the years and thousands of hours of struggle? And also, how does it change the way that you see and interact with the world. Well, here's what happened for me over my thousands of hours. To be able to describe the changes, I need to tell you how it feels trying to solve hard math problems. The best analogy I have is as follows. Solving a hard problem is like exploring a cave, trying to get out the other side. The problem statement is the entrance. But you have no idea how deep the cave is, how wild its tunnel system is, how many dead ends there are, and how connected it is. Once you've digested the problem statement, some possible paths open up. You decide on the one you think is most promising and explore that. Chances are it's a dead end. But before turning around and heading back to the start, you stop for a moment to think about if the structure of the tunnel tells you why it had to have been a dead end. Now you've learned a bit more about the cave, and when you go back to the start, likely a new route seems much more promising. So you go explore that one, equipped with the knowledge of the previous dead end. And this process goes on and on and on, until eventually you've explored this intricate structure and have come out the other side solving the problem. And so after doing this so many times, here are the changes that have happened to my brain over the years. Early on into learning math, a big weakness of mine was not being able to look at a dead end and extract the key reasons as to what was blocking it, or even with problems I had solved. I would often turn the handle and a correct solution comes out, but I wouldn't be left with a strong sense of what it was that was key to that problem. But you pick up this ability quite quickly, otherwise you just drown trying to hold too much in your head at once with complicated ideas and problems. It's important to note that often you cannot exactly pinpoint why an argument has failed. But with time, you learn how to ask yourself the right questions to get a sense of where it's going wrong. What happens if I change this condition in this way? And this ability to condense away the fluff is something you start seeing in real life too. A very common incorrect tendency for humans is that of correlation versus causation. For example, I partied more in my second year of my degree and did better in my exams. So that means I should party even more in my third year. <laughs> now that's a crude example, but it's a very useful skill that your brain develops with math. Being able to strip away the fluff, attributing correctly why something has or hasn't happened. As problems in math get harder and more complex, the tunnel system of the cave gets more intricate. There are times where you've explored all the paths you can see, but eventually they are all blocked. However, you realise that if you go halfway down one path and drill across in the direction of another, then you'll pick up that other path past its blockage. Being able to draw connections is hugely important in math. I've got a video going through an example of this happening for me in an exam. And it really is something you get better at as you study more and see examples of how other people in the past have done it for the topic you're reading about. But it's not just connections within a cave. Often, the key to solving a problem comes from recalling a similar looking entrance to a cave you've met in the past. And so you can sense a lot of its structure you've already explored might be useful to you. Indeed, doing this between different fields is how Terence Tao says he earns his living. I think that this is the biggest shock to the system when you start learning math at undergrad level and beyond. You learn very quickly that early on in your math journey, there is a good chance that often your arguments contain logical holes or are incorrect in ways you just can't see until someone points them out to you. And because of this, you start building a reflex where you take the position that you are wrong and try to pick holes in your own thoughts and proofs. This is essential in maths. But for me, this skeptic reflex got almost a bit too strong at around one year in. Because if you are really deeply questioning every thought and every facet of an argument, of course this slows you down loads. But what happens over time as you get more exposure to math is that you develop a good sense of, given the setting of a problem, what are the likely issues I may not have given enough attention to in my argument? And so your sceptic reflex becomes more efficient than just questioning if every thought you are having is correct or not. But developing this reflex has a huge net positive in real life too, because humans can be quite good at convincing themselves that things they want to be true are true. Of course, I probably still do it, but developing this reflex helps you be a whole lot more conscious of this. 
Now, I want to hear your thoughts about this because I've said in the past how I think your raw compute power, that is how much you can hold in your head, how complex the logical chains of thoughts you can get through are, is something that you can increase over time while studying math. However, I wonder how much of this improvement is a side effect of better extracting of key details and a more efficient skeptic system. To see what I mean, suppose you've got five balls positioned randomly in a line and you need to get them back in order, but the only way to switch the order is by juggling them. A juggler with a high power operating system can juggle all five at once and get them back in order. But suppose that your ability only allows you to juggle at most three at a time and you can only juggle in such a way that cycles the balls around, but then by choosing the most relevant pair or triple at any point in time and forgetting the rest, you can still get all the balls back ordered correctly again. The analogy here being juggling ideas in your head. So I really don't know if your raw compute power is something you can actually increase. But either way, the enhancements to your brain that come with the struggle of studying math is one of the many fruits of this pursuit. One of my supervisors is 89 years of age, a full lifetime in math. His office (laughs) is a time capsule. But still, he has one of the sharpest operating systems I've ever had the pleasure of interacting with. 